Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. Today, President Trump talks to the UN and what Judge Kavanaugh already said on camera. Plus, a Weight Watcher's name change and Facebook dating. Those stories and many more in less than 10 minutes. I'm Erica Mandy. Today is Tuesday, September 25th. You ready? Let's do this. Today, President Trump is set to address the U.N. General Assembly in New York starting at 10.15 a.m. Eastern Time. The General Assembly, of course, is a main part of the United Nations. All member countries get a vote. It's President Trump's second speech to the General Assembly. Last year was when he threatened to destroy North Korea. Of course, a lot has changed since then, considering the two leaders had a historic and friendly meeting this year and may make plans to meet again. For now, the Trump administration told Fox News to expect a focus on America's foreign policy in today's speech. I'm putting a link to the live stream in today's show notes on thenewsworthy.com if you want to watch. The Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh and his wife went on TV to try and clear his name. Kavanaugh was on Fox News last night, and he said multiple times he's never sexually assaulted anyone, period. And he will not be intimidated into withdrawing his name. Remember, Christine Blasey Ford says he sexually assaulted her at a party when they were in high school, and results from a recent polygraph test said she was telling the truth. Since then, another woman told The New Yorker he exposed himself to her when they were freshmen at Yale. And now a well-known attorney is saying a third woman will come out with more accusations this week. But Kavanaugh went on camera and said all of this is false and a smear campaign, and he's ready to say that under oath. The AP points out it's rare for a Supreme Court nominee to go on camera, but then again, nothing about this is typical. For now, a public hearing is set for this Thursday. Both Kavanaugh and Blasey Ford will say their sides of the story and answer some questions under oath. Well, it seems Thursday is going to be a big day in Washington. It's now also the day a meeting may decide the fate of the deputy attorney general. President Trump is set to meet with Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. Rosenstein is the second in command at the Justice Department. He's also the guy who oversees the Russia investigation. Well, a New York Times report found Rosenstein once considered secretly recording Trump and even thought about trying to remove him from office. Even though Rosenstein calls the report false, the AP reports he did offer to resign and then thought he would get fired yesterday. But for now, his job is safe, and the Russia investigation he oversees is unaffected. At least until that meeting with the president on Thursday, when we should learn more. Stay tuned. A quick note before wrapping up politics today. It is National Voter Registration Day. It's a day every year where volunteers and organizations around the country want to make sure people know they need to register to vote or update their registration. Of course, if you miss your state's deadline to register to vote, you can't go to the polls on Election Day. So I've put links in today's show notes on thenewsworthy.com where you can learn more or register to vote online. All right, some other things people may be talking about today. Satellite radio company SiriusXM says it's acquiring the streaming music service Pandora in a $3.5 billion all-stock deal. CNBC reports it would bring together 36 million Sirius subscribers with Pandora's 70 million monthly active users. And assuming it all goes according to plan, it'll make SiriusXM the world's largest audio entertainment company. Do not call it Weight Watchers anymore. The company is cutting back on letters in its name. The new name is WW, with a new tagline, Wellness That Works. CNN says it's meant to reflect an idea of overall health and wellness, including having a positive mindset, not just losing weight. In fact, an updated app is coming out early next month that will have some changes to it. Plus, WW is partnering with the meditation app Headspace. In other words, it sounds like WW wants to appeal to a wider range of people and get them to sign up. Okay, a quick break now to thank our sponsor this week, Swap.com. If you have not heard of this yet, Swap.com is the world's largest online consignment and thrift store. It sells brands like Lululemon, Carter's, Nike, J.Crew, and Gap, while letting you save up to 90% off the retail price. I don't know about you, but I can get pretty overwhelmed walking into resale shops and having to dig through everything and spend so much time at the store. With Swap.com, it's much easier. You filter your search settings to find exactly what you're looking for, all with a few clicks. So do you want women's workout clothes? Check. Need a child's costume for Halloween coming up? 
check. Everything you find is gently used, quality, hand-inspected items, and there are new items added daily. Plus, once you buy, if something does not fit, there are hassle-free returns within 30 days. Swap.com is offering a special offer to the Newsworthy listeners. Get 35% off select items for your first order with the promo code NEWSWORTHY. Again, just go to Swap.com and use the promo code NEWSWORTHY. You'll also have a chance to check out new deals listed every day on Swap.com's homepage. Now, back to the news. Well, this week, Facebook is expected to announce it's coming out with its very own in-home device, a video chat device, basically a smart speaker with a display like the Amazon Echo Show. The news outlet Cheddar is citing sources saying it'll be called Portal. And with all the privacy concerns that have surrounded Facebook lately, you'll be glad to know it comes with a privacy shutter that covers the video camera when you're not using it. By the way, Facebook also launched its first version of its new matchmaking feature called Dating, but only in Colombia for now. It's a sort of test in that country before Facebook takes it worldwide. Wired reports Facebook users have to be at least 18 years old to sign up, and there's no swiping allowed. It's meant to find long-term relationships. When will that new Facebook dating feature come to the U.S.? TBD. And last thing about Facebook today, the New York Times reports the original founders of Instagram gave notice that they're leaving the company. Instagram was, of course, bought by Facebook, and the two founders stayed on. Well, now they say they're ready for the next chapter. Stay tuned for what they could come up with next. Get ready to snap and shop. Snapchat just announced it'll be rolling out a feature that lets you use Snapchat's camera to scan an object or barcode and then get information straight from Amazon. Yes, The Verge reports Snapchat is partnering with Amazon to make this happen. So you scan, see a pop-up card with info, and then if you tap on it, you get sent to Amazon's app or Amazon.com so you can buy it. Many social media sites are also trying to get you to spend your money right from the platform. Instagram, for example, is launching shopping tags in its stories feature. And Pinterest is now letting all business accounts use something called Shop the Look Pins. Microsoft Office tools just got smarter, as in artificial intelligence. TechCrunch reports several new AI tools are coming, including one called Ideas. It's meant to help you while you work. For example, it'll find and suggest images for your PowerPoint presentation. And in Excel, new image recognition lets you convert a picture of a data table into an Excel file. Those tools and many more were announced this week at Microsoft's Ignite conference in Florida. Fortune's list of the most powerful women is here. And number one goes to Marilyn Hewson. She's the president and CEO of Lockheed Martin, a global security and aerospace company. Others on the list of 51 women include Facebook's Sheryl Sandberg and Oprah. Fortune says this year's list of women control just under $1 trillion in market cap. Have you played Scrabble lately? You know, the popular board game where you use tiles to spell words for points? Well, I ask because there are now 300 new words in the official Scrabble Players Dictionary. Reuters reports there are some sophisticated words in there, but the new words that are getting the most attention include emoji, twerk, bestie, and okay with only two letters. And that's it. Thanks so much for listening. If you got value out of today's episode, please be sure to share it with some friends. And if you want to read more about any of the news stories we talked about, I make it easy for you. You'll find links and more articles in today's show notes. Go to thenewsworthy.com, click episodes, and find today's date. The Newsworthy is ready for you to listen every weekday by four in the morning. So we'll chat again tomorrow. Have a great day. (laughs) 